to various uh, rules of transmission. Tirmizi also recorded from Hadith Abu Dawood said about it, Hassan and Sahih. Swearing by the pen refers to greatness of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, Ma anta bi niyamati rabbika bi majnoon. You, by the grace of your Lord, are not insane. Why he is, uh, here Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been consoled by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because the mushrikeen in Makkah, disbelievers of Makkah, they are hurting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is consoling the heart of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he hurts the people, isn't it? So here Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being consoled. You, by the grace of your Lord, are not insane, meaning all praises is due to Allah. You are not a crazy, um, of the ignorant among your people. Uh, ignorant means the people who are saying this kind of things to hurt Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi They are those who deny the guidance and fear truth you have come with. Therefore, they attribute madness to you because of it. Really, for you will be rewarded. That is not Mamnu. Meaning, if you is great reward and abundant blessing, which will never end, which will never cut off or perish because you conveyed the message of your Rabb to the creation and you were uh, patient with the cover, with the uh, abuse because they were torturing so much with their behavior. But Muhammad Sallallahu did not have suffered. The meaning of why you Mamnu, not Mamnu, is that it will not cut off. It's similar to Allah's statement, Atta and Vaira, much zoos. Surah number 11, Ayah number 108, a gift without an end. And statement, Falahum ajru gayru mamnoon, and then they shall have a reward without end. Here, uh, Surah number 95, Ayah number 6, Mujahid said, Gayru mamnoon, without mamnoon means without reckoning. This refers back to what said before, the explanation of the statement, verily, you are on the exalted character. Who? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being appreciated in Ayah number 4, Surah Al-Qalam, or you can call it Surah Al-Nur. Wa innaka la ala kulukun azim. Kulukin azim. Verily, you are on the exalted standard of character. Awfi reported from Ibn Abbas, daily you are on a great religion, and that is Islam. Mujahid and other Mufassir said this regarding, reported from Qatada that he said concerning Allah's statement, daily you are on an exalted standard of character. It has been mentioned that Saad bin Hisham asked Aisha Radiallana about the character of Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She replied, have you not read the Quran? Uh, Saad said, of course. Then she said, verily the character of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is like a Quran. Abdul Razak recorded similar to this and Imam Muslim recorded in Sahih on the authority of Qatada in full life. This means that he would act according to the command and the prohibition in the Quran. His nature and character were patterned according to the Quran and abandoned his natural disposition, the carnal nature. So whatever the Quran commanded, he did it. And whatever it forbids, he avoids it. Along with this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him exalted character, which included the qualities of modesty, kindness, bravery, forgiving people, gentleness, and every other good characteristic. Every other good characteristic. This is like that which has been confirmed in Tosahi that Anna said, I served Messenger of Allah Sallallahu for 10 years. He never said a word of displeasure to me. Not even of, nor he, uh, nor did he ever say to me concerning something I had done 
why did you do that or why you why didn't you do that? You know, he was there with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for ten years. He never said that, and he never said to me concerning something I had not done. Why didn't you do this? He had the best character, and I never touched any silk or anything else that was softer than the palm of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I never smelled any musk or perfume. That had a better fragrance than the sweetness of Messenger of Salah Islam. You look at his palm was so soft when he touches it, and it has a fragrance of musk from it. Imam Bukhari recorded that Al Bara said Messenger of Allah Salah Islam had the most handsome face of all the people, and he had the best behavior of all the people, and he was not tall. Nor was he short. The hadith concerning this matter are numerous. Abu Isa al Tirmidhi has complete book on the subject called Kitab al Shamae. Imam Ahmad recorded that Aisha radiallahu anha said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam never struck servant of his with his hand, never. Nor did he ever hit a woman. He never hit anything with his hand except for when he was fighting in jihad in the cause of Allah, and he was never given option between two things except that the most beloved of uh, two to him was the easiest of them. As long as it did not involve sin, if it did involve sin, then he stayed farther away from the sin than any of the people. You know. Slight thing of the sin also, he will be further away. He would not avenge himself concerning anything that was done to him, except if the limits of Allah were transgressed. Then, in that case, he would avenge for Lillahi, for the sake of Allah, not for personal reason. Never. Imam Ahmad also recorded from Abu Hurairah that Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "In Nama." So here it's mentioned. I have only been sent to perfect righteous behavior. Sawale akla. Ahmed was alone in recording this hadith in reference to Allah's statement. Fasatubusiru wa yubusiru bi ayyikum maftoon. You will see, and they will see which of you is afflicted with madness. <laughs> Then it means you will know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and those who oppose you and reject you will know who is insane and misguided among you. This is like the statement in Surah number fifty-four, Ayah number twenty-six. Tomorrow they will come to know who is the liar and the insolent one. Sayalamuna ada manil alzabu ushir. Allah's statement says in Surah number thirty-four, Ayah number twenty-four, barely either we are or you are rightly guided or in plain error. But inna au iyaqum la ala hudan au fi dalalin mubin. Ibn Juraj reported from Ibn Abbas. It means you will know, and they will know on the day of judgment. Al Aufi reported from Ibn Abbas. Bi ayi kumul maftoon. Which of you is maftoon? Means afflicted with madness. Which of you is crazy? This was also said by Mujahid and others as well. The literal meaning of maftoon is one who has been charmed or lured away from truth and has strayed from it. The entire statement means so you will know and they will know, and you will be informed, and they will be informed as to which of you is afflicted with madness. And Allah knows best. Inna Rabbaka huwa alam biman dalla an sabili wa huwa alam bil muhtadi. Verily, 
the Lord is the best more of hope of him who has gone astray. Salala. From his path and his best more of those who are guided. Mahdadeen. I number eight, we are doing Surah al or Surah al -Khalam. We can call both ways. I number eight, so do not obey the deniers. They wish that you should compromise with them, so they too would compromise with you. And do not obey ever Allah and Mahim. Hamas going about with Nami, hinder of the good, transgress sinful, Kutul and whatever the name, they could not disturb this one in more detail. He was so because he had wealth and children. This is talking about a particular person, but his name is not mentioned. And uh, when our ayahs are recited to him, he says tales of the men of old, table tales. We shall brand him on the snout nose. So here, prohibition of giving into the pressure of disbelievers and their suggestion. And they like to meet in the middle of the path. So Allah says, just as we have favored you and given uh, you the right to upright legislation and great stand-up of character, So here, so do not obey the deniers because they be. They are denying, they are lying. They wish, they wish that you should compromise. But do, love to the payud hinun. So they too would compromise with you. It may Abbas said that you would permit them their idolatry. They want uh, you to give the permission without doing the idol worship. And they also would permit you to practice your Islamic monotheism. Mujahid said, but do love to the Hinuna Payud Hinun, they wish that they wish that you should compromise with them, so they too would compromise with you. This means that you should be quiet about their idols, gods, and abandon the truth that you are upon. Means Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on Islamic monotheism, and they want to abandon that truth. They want to deviate from the right path. So they took out this way and they were pressurizing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi That was the thing mentioned over here. And do not obey ever. Halla, one who swears much, Mahin, liar or worthless person. Wala tut in kulla halla fi Mahin. Because the liar, due to the weakness and disgracefulness, only seeks protection in his false oaths, which he bodily swears to while using Allah's name, Wallahi Tallahi, and he uses them for false oaths. All the time, out of place, unnecessarily. Have you ever seen people, they keep on swearing. Why? In order to prove themselves right. Have you ever noticed? When certain things they are not doing on certain times and they, they start making up and they are saying, Allah, Allah, I want to, but I was not able to, so on and so forth. Allah says, Hamaz, Ibn Abbas, Fatada said, this is land work. And going among Namim, Masha and Namim, this refers to the one who goes around among people instigating discord between them and crying tales in order to corrupt relations between the people that they are good and pleasant. It is confirmed in two sati that Mujahid reported from Taos that Ibn Abbas said the messenger of Allah Sallallahu once passed by two gates and he said barely these two are being punished. Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said they are not they are not being punished for something major. One of them was not careful about protecting himself from unity, then relieving himself. The other one was to spread namima. Namima is like, you know, uh, carrying things and um, instigating and uh, creating discord between the people. Imam Ahmad uh, recorded and Hudayfa said, I heard Messenger of Allah Sallallahu the slander will not enter into paradise. La yaduhulul jannata pattad. The hadith has been reported by a group except Ibn 
Maja concerning Allah's statement, Manna in the fiery Mu'atadin Asim. Hinderer of good, transgressor, sinful. It means he refused to give and withhold that which he has of good. Mu'atadin transgressor. This means in attaining that which Allah has made permissible for him. He exceeds the legislated bounds. And asin sinful, meaning he delivers into forbidden things. Utul in bad zalika zanin. Utul and moreover zanin. Utul means one who is cruel, harsh, very rude, greedy, stingy. And Imam Ahmad recorded that the Messenger of Allah said, Shall I inform you of the people of Jannah? They will be very weak and oppressed person. When he swears by Allah, he fulfills his oath. Shall I inform you of the people of fire? Every Utu, cruel person, Jawaz, an arrogant person, al baqi said it is Utu is very Jawaz and Jazari, an arrogant person. So here what we learn, Allah so they are righteous people, they are weak, oppressed, and if they swore, they completed. So they are utul, jawaz, and mustaqbir. So here what we learn, here they are, sorry. They are Utul, Jawaz, every Utul, cruel person, Jawaz, arrogant person, Baki, Utul is every Jawaz, Jazari and arrogant person, both Bukhari and Muslim recorded. The scholar of Arabic language have said that Al Jazari means rude and harsh, while Jawaz means greedy and stingy. Concerning the word Zanim, Bukhari recorded from Ibn Abbas that he said concerning the ayah, Utul, Bada Zalika Zanin, Utul, Kruel. Moreover, Zanin, a man, Quraysh, who stands out among them like the sheep that has had a piece of its ear cut off. The meaning of this that is he is famous for his evil just. As a sheep that has a piece of its ear cut off, stands out among its sister sheep. In Arabic language, the Zanim is a person who is adopted among a group of people. He is not truly of them. Ibn Jarir, others, Imams have said concerning Allah's statement, Ankana Zamilan Mabanim, he has so because he had wealth and children. When our ayahs are recited to him, he says, Asatiru Abanim, Fable Days. So Allah is saying this is how he responds to the favor of Allah bestowed upon him wealth and children by disbelieving in Allah's ayah and turning away while claiming that they are life that has been taken from the fable tales. So similar statement is mentioned Zarni Waman Khalaqtu Wahidan Alayha Tisatan Ashra Leave me alone to deal with whom I created only without any wealth and children. Then granted him resources in abundance and children to buy his side and made life smooth and comfortable to him. After all that, he desired that I should give more. Really, he has been opposing our ayah. I shall oblige him to face a severe torment. Really, he thought and plotted. So let him cursed. So he plotted and once more let him be cursed. How he plotted. Then he thought, then he frowned. He looked in a bad tempered way. Then he turned back and was proud. Then he said, This is nothing but magic from that of old. This is nothing but the word of a human being. I will cast him into the hellfire and will make him know that what is hellfire. It spares not any sinner, nor does it leave anything unburned, burning, and blackening the skin. Over it, 19 angels are keepers of hellfire. So these are the following ayahs mentioned in Quran number 74 from ayah number 11 to 30. 
esto es la statement tan así no go a la porto visual branding on the snout Ibn Jarir said they will make his matter clear and evident. So they will know him. He will not hidden from them. Just as the branding mark on the snout of the animal. Others have said this. Anasimuhu, we shall brand him. This is the mark of the people of the Alpha. Meaning they will blacken his face on the day of judgment. And the face has been referred to here as the snout. And number 17 to ayah number 33. It's a short ayah. It has just the translation and not so much detail about it. Daily we have tried them as they tried the people of garden when they swore to pluck the fruits in the morning. Here the story starts of the people of the garden whose father was a righteous person who used to distribute all the fruits he has in the garden. Without saying it, if Allah wills, and then they passed over it a taif from your Lord while they were asleep. So by the morning it became like a serene. They called out one another as the morning broke, saying, Go to you till in the morning if you will pluck the fruit. So they departed and they were whispering. No poor person shall enter upon you into the and they went in the morning with hard adhiri. And uh, when they saw it, they said, Daily we have gone astray. Nay, indeed, we are deprived. The outset means the middle one said, Did I not tell you why did you not use it uh, to stop the human? Why didn't you do the tasbih? So they glorify Allah, we have been wrongdoers. They realize and they themselves said they are wrongdoers. They turned one against another, blaming. They said, What to us be there? Uh, uh, so we were the tabi and we hope that our Lord will. He was in exchange better than it. Truly, we hope in our Lord. Such is the punishment, but truly the punishment of hereafter is the great, and they but know. The parable of the removal of earning of the disbelievers. This is a parable that Allah made behavior of the Quraysh disbelievers. With the great mercy and tremendous favors, he granted them. The mercy and favor of sending of Muhammad but they met with the denial, rejection, and opposition. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa says, Inna balaw Really, we have tried them, being, we have tested them. And here, balaw na ashabul jannah. We tried the people of garden. Here, the story starts about the people of garden. This refers to the garden containing different types of fruits and vegetation. Is aqsamu li yasrimu naha musbihin. They swore to pluck the fruits of the garden in the morning. They thought because their father was a very righteous person and he used to distribute the fruits, they want to pluck out in the morning so that they, they don't have to give it to anyone. So they thought they will plan and go in the early morning and they will pluck out everything. And without saying if Allah wills, meaning they vow that they made before, uh, therefore, Allah broke their vow. He then said, Patafa alayha taifun min rabbi tawahua na'im. Then they passed over a taif from your Lord while they were asleep. Meaning, it was afflicted with some heavenly destruction. Like, you know, by night something happened to the garden. Fa'asbahat as-sarim. So by the morning it became like a sarim. Ibn Abbas said, like a dark night. And the other Mufasid through sorry said, like the crop when it is harvested, withered and dried. Completely nothing was there. But now the must be him. Then they called out to one another as the morning break. You know, in the morning, uh, the light started morning. Meaning when this was early morning, time they called each other. So they could go together to pick the harvest, to cut it its fruit. You know, they, they want to whisper to each other so that nobody knows and quietly they go and cut off the fruits and get it. So what happened? Saying, go to your tilt in the morning. Sorry mean if you would pluck this fruit. And sorry means like, you know, completely pluck it out. When you take out the fruits from the tree, still some will be left. They are thinking like completely taking off. Nothing will be left. So meaning if you want to pluck your harvest fruit, so they departed.
everything they were whispering because in order nobody should know they were whispering meaning they spoke privately about what they were doing so that no one could hear what they were saying then allah knows allah is a knower and allah knows is that is so to even what you are thinking in your chest explain what they were saying in private he said it hmm. so they departed and they were whispering no poor person shall enter upon you into it today an la yadkhulunaha yawma alaykum miskeen nan meaning some of them said to others don't allow any miskeen poor person to enter upon you in garden today allah then said wa qadaw ala harib harib and they went in the morning with harib meaning with the strength and power hadirin meaning they thought they had power then they came and then they were desiring but when they saw it they said verily we have gone astray alamma ra'awha qalu inna ladallun they realized finally nothing is there meaning when they arrived it and came upon it it was in the condition which allah changed from that the lust of brilliance and the abundance of fruit it is black gloomy and void of uh, no benefit they believed that they had been mistaken in the path they look at they took in walking into it that is why they said in the ladan no really we have gone past the meaning we have walked down a path other than the one we were seeking to reach it. this was uh, said by ibn abbas and others then they changed their mind realized with the certainty that it was actually the correct path they thought maybe they are in somebody else's garden or this is not the right path but actually they realized it was their own garden which was previously they noticed it was full of uh, fruits now nothing is left indeed we are deprived of the fruits bal nahnu mahrumun meaning this is it but we have no portion no share harvest pala ausatuhum so among them the middle one who was uh, like little bit has the uh, Uh, like knowledge and so so ibn abbas and mujahid had said alam aqul lakum law la tusbihu did i not tell you why do you do not do the tasbih mujahid or sudi and ibn jurayd said why did you not do to sabbih this means why did you not say if allah wills as sudi said they are making exception due to the will of allah in that time was glorifying allah by tasbih ibn jarir said it is a person saying if allah wills it has been said that it means the best of them said to them did i not tell you that why did you glorify allah and thank him so they are telling to each other we might have glorified allah we might have said if allah wills so on so forth qalu subhana rabbina inna kunna zalimin finally they realized no they said glory to allah we have been wrong towards inna kunna zalimin Uh, they became obedient when it was no benefit to them and they were remorseful confessed when it was not of any use then they said inna kunna zalimin really we have been wrong to then they turn one against another blame now they started blaming you know something goes wrong it is our habit we start blaming it's a normal human being nature so they were blaming each other uh, and then what happened meaning they started blaming each other for what they had regard to preventing the poor people from receiving the right of the harvested fruits their response to each other was only to confess their error and say and they said what to us really we were taqu qalu ya wailana inna kunna taqi no they said no actually we are wrong and we did taqi we transgressed it meaning we have transgressed transgressed violated exceeded the bounds and they were what has been uh, to us we hope that our lord will forgive us finally they realized asa rabbuna an yubdilana khairan they said we hope that uh, our lord will forgive and exchange yubdilana from badala to exchange from um, from khairan minha that exchange that to that it minha inna ila rabbina raqibun and it truly we hope in our lord it has been said they were hoping for something better in exchange in this life it also been said that they were hoping for its reward in the abode for the hereafter and allah knows best some of the salaf mentioned that these people were from yemen sayyid bin jubair said they were from a village that was called darawan 
which was six miles from Sana and Yemen. It also been said they were from the people of Ethiopia, whose father had left them this garden and they were from the people of this. Their father used to handle the garden in good way. Whatever he reaped from it, he would pluck a good thing back into the garden as it needed. And he would save some of the food for his dependent for the year. And he would give away the excess in charity. Then when he died and his children inherited the garden, they said, really, our father was a foolish person for giving some of his garden harvest to the poor. If we prevent them from it, then we have more. So when they made up their minds to do this, they were punished. With what was contrary to their plan, Allah took away all what they possessed of wealth, gain and charity, nothing remained for them. So what we learn from this, you know, their father was a righteous person. He used to give to the uh, charity to the poor person. But they were planning a wrong thing and their intention was not correct. Because of wrong intention, they lost all the good. Such is the punishment. Meaning such is the punishment of poor oppose the command of Allah. Stingy, what Allah has given him and favored him with holds the rights of the poor and needy in response to Allah's blessing upon him, ungratefulness of disbelief. So here truly the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they but know. Meaning this is punishment in this life as you have heard and the punishment of hereafter is even harder. So what we learn, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, there is a share with the others also. It doesn't mean that we own of everything. Never. And from the 34 to 41, really for those who have taqwa are gardens of delight with their Lord, shall we then treat the Muslims like the criminal? What is the matter with you? How judge you? Or you have a book that you learn that you shall bear, have all that you choose. Or you have oaths from us lasting until the day of judgment that you are still to what you judge. Ask them which of them will stand as a surety for that. Or have they partners? Then let them think their partners if they are truthful. So here really for those who have taqwa are the gardens of delight with their Lord. Shall we treat the Muslims like the criminals? What is the matter with you? How you judge you? How you have book where you learn? You shall therein have all that you choose, that you have both from us lasting until the day of judgment, that was to be what you judge. Ask them which of them will stand surely for that. Or they have partners, let them think their partners if they are truthful. And about 42 to 47, the day when the shin will be there open and they shall be called to prostrate themselves in the sudhu. But they shall not be able to do so. Why? Their eyes will cast down. Ignorance will follow them. They used to be called to prostrate themselves to the sujud while they were cold. Now they are in a sound condition, but they were not able to do the sujud because they never did in the dunya. Then leave me alone with whoever denies this narration. We shall punish them gradually from direction they proceed now, and I will grant them a respite. Then my plan is strong. Or is it that you ask them a wage or so, or so that they are? heavily burdened with debt, or that unseen is in their hand, or they can write it down. These are the things Allah is asking. So the terror of the day of judgment. After Allah mentioned that those who have taqwa, they have delight of gardens, he explained when this will be its actual occurrence, he says eh, that day when the shin uh, shall be laid bare, they shall be caught called to do the sajda themselves, but they shall not be able to do so. Meaning the day of judgment and the horrid earthquakes, trials, tests, and great manners that will occur during it. Bukhari recorded that he heard that Prophet Islam saying, Our Lord will reveal his shin. Every believing male and female will prostrate do the sujood to him. The only people who will remain standing are those who prostrate in the worldly life only to be seen for the riya to show up. The type of person will try to prostrate at that time, but his back will made to be stiff straight. The bone will not bend or flex. You know, if people are doing just to show up in this world, that moment of time in the akhirah, they won't be able to do the sudhu the prostration. The hadith was recorded by two sahih. Concerning Allah's statement, Hashiyatu Absarhum Tarhukuhum Zilla, 
their eyes will be catched on ignominy will cover their meaning in the final abode due to their crimes and arrogance in the worldly life they will be punished with the opposite of what they did and they used to be called to prostrate themselves by their whole and he refused because in the dunya they never do they did the sujood waqad kanu yud'una ila sujoodi wa hum salimun they were salim they were sound but they refused to do it they were called to do the sujood sujood in a, in the holy life they refused to do so even though they were healthy and sound and secure therefore they will be punished with the lack of ability to do so in the hereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says himself visible before the believers and the believers will fall down in the sujood to him but no one of the disbelievers and hypocrites will be able to do the prostrate rather their backs will become one plate every time one of them attempts to prostrate he will bow his neck but he will not be able to prostrate this is just like in life of the world when these people were in opposition what the believers were doing for whoever denies the quran then allah says then leave me alone with such be we like this narration meaning for and this is severe threat which means leave me alone with this person i know about him how i will gradually punish him and increase him in the falsehood and giving him respite a while that i will seize him with the mighty and powerful punishment then allah says we shall punish them gradually from direction they perceive from sanas their juhum min haythu la ya'lamun meaning they will not be aware of it rather they will believe that it's a noble blessing from allah but really the same matter is actually a form of humiliation for them this is similar to allah's statement in surah number 23 ayah number 55 to 56 do they think that in wealth and children with the which we stand and we hasten unto them the good things made when they proceed to allah is giving the blessing and allah will catch for one day in surah number 6 ayah number 44 so when we forgot that which they had been reminded we open for them gates of everything until in the midst of the enjoyment and that which this is in all of the sudden we punish them they were plunged into destruction and deep regrets and sorrow so don't think now everything is given allah is opening the door and giving the respite allah will catch hold of them one day and i will grant them a respite they will my plan is strong wa ummi lahum in qaidi mati meaning i will delay them give them respite and extend their time yes this is my plan and my plan against them thus allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said my plan is strong meaning greater against whoever opposes my command rejects my messenger and fears to disobey me so to sahih recorded really allah example gives respite to wrong doers until he sees them and he will not be able to escape him then he recited such is the punishment of your lord when he seizes the counts when they are doing wrong really this punishment is painful and severe surah number 11 ah number 102 so is it you ask them for a wage or they are heavily burden with debt or that unseen in their hands so they can write it down allah is asking do you know about unseen can you write it down they don't but they are making up so wait with the patience now rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is consoling wait with the patience for the decision of your lord be not like the companion of the fish means like you know sallallahu alaihi wasallam he cried out to us while he was maqsud had not the grace from his lord reached him he would indeed have been left in the stomach of the fish but we forgave him why forgive him because he recited la ilaha illallah subhanahu wa ta'ala kuntum minas zalimin so allah forgave him he realized his mistake so he was cast off on the naked shore when he was to be going then his lord chose him and made him righteous who uh, you know sallallahu alaihi wasallam they those is believe almost make you slip with their eyes through hatred when they hear the remembrance of quran they say really he is a madman so what they are saying madman to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but it is nothing else than a reminder to all the creatures all all so the command to be patient and to refrain from being hasty like yunus al-islam 
asbir li hukm al rabbika wait with the patient's decision to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his behavior against the harm or your people cause you a rejection so be not like the companion of the faith because you know sallallahu alaihi wasallam the people they this they this believe he got angry uh, with his people they did things happen to him such a as riding on a ship of the sea being swallowed by large fish fish carrying off him the ocean being in the darkness death, uh, death of the sea hearing the seas and dwelling glorification of the most high the most people so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally he forgave him to yunus alayhis salam that was the thing he had reminded that none has the right to be worship but you all are glorify fully i have been the wrong word this was mentioned in surah number 21 and number 87 la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimin so we answered his call and delivered him from the distress and we do uh, be deliver the believers surah number 21 and number 88 this is in surah al anbiya dua is also mentioned over there so had he not been of the glory allah he would been remained remained inside the gully fish because if he did make the dua he would be in the gully fish the belly of the fish and this is uh, mentioned in surah number 37 
to heal Rukhya from everything that bothers, bothers you, from the evil of every soul and every evil life that hates you. May Allah force you in the name of Allah, I pray you for healing. So you can recite this also. Bismillahi arqika min kulli shayin yuhseeka wa min shirri kulli nasihaini tashmeeka wallahu yashfeeka bismillahi arqika. It is there in morning, evening, duas, bayak and sayin. And also this dua, Bismillahi arqika min kulli shayin yuhseeka min kulli hasidin wa aynin allahu yashfeeka. This dua also you can recite. Now the hadith of Asma bin Ta'umayn said, Nam wa yaw la ta'ala shayin yasbiku al-qadra la ta'khidu al-ayn. Ayn is a must. If for anything could overcome the divine decree, it would be the evil eye. The hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, if he maja recorded from Aisha radiallahu anha, to have rukhya performed as a cure against the evil eye. The messenger of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out on journey in the direction of Makkah and the companions accompanied him until they came to the valley of Kharar from Al-Juhayf. They stopped there. Sahal took a bath. His Sahal was a white man with a handsome body and nice skin. So the brother of Bani Adi bin Taab, Amir bin Rabia, looked at Sahal while he bathed and he said, this word, already we have seen this hadith, same hadith regarding Amir bin Rabia and how the bath has to be taken with, after doing the bath in the pool and keep the evil eye that water has to be taken and do the shower. Accusation of disbelief and the reply to this was a Surah Noon and this is called Surah Tul Kalamas. Jazakallah khairan kaseera, subhanakallah, mahamdika, nashadu Allah, ilaha illa anta, nasta khairuk.